shall we? Where are we? Are we? Are we? Are we? Here we go. <sighs> Welcome to the understanding of uh, African spirituality. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your patience coming in from African spirituality class to I mean African history class, roots and culture to this particular session. We uh, thank you for being here and. Uh, Again, you know, you, you gotta change energies, you, you, you gotta change focus and mindsets, you, you got to regather your thoughts and information just for the sake of teaching. Wait, wait, and let me make sure as we continue that this is being posted on all the pages that we would like to have it posted on. Give me a second for a little bit of techno technical uh updating all right again 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 welcome 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 for uh, another session another series another Saturday of African understanding African spirituality uh, we skipped a week last week if you were watching on on African history class we skipped a week last week because we were in the process of uh, doing a, uh, a a homegoing ceremony and so we were celebrating a homegoing ceremony celebrating the uh, celebration of life to our a good brother of ours and uh, it was definitely definitely a, a celebration um, and so it was worth me missing <laughs> definitely because we use all the practices and processes and understanding that we have with God and the nature of God and spirituality um, to celebrate this brother's life uh, I want you to say that uh, again um, I am not the expert in my community I am what you call the Malachio I am the seeker uh, we know that I am is the two most powerful words in the dictionary because when you say the words I am you enter into a the God realm or your God consciousness where you can manifest the things you speak and so I am a Malachio and as I uh, acquire information knowledge wisdom and understanding I share it um, in uh, an African spirituality we make sure that we study from a sympathetic ear because being here 403 years in an oppressive society uh, they took our culture away from us. They took our heritage away from us. They took our history away from us. And so as we go to claim it back we, we take our time to listen with an open ear, open heart, and an open mind. Trying to push the the the, the uh, imprint of our oppressive society out so we can allow our, our God consciousness to kick in and uh, see things from a perspective that the Creator would have us see things. Uh, I know that um, you know, so we're not knocking in, in spirituality. We don't knock anybody else's faith or religion or processes. As long as it doesn't harm anybody else. You know, in Africa, if there are 4,200 different tribes, there are 4,200 ways to give praise and worship. No one has a full understanding of the Creator. And any one believing that they have a full understanding of the creator yeah isn't <laughs> we'll say it as, as simply as that um, and so we want to make sure that uh, we when we look at African spirituality there are two things that we say in my community ABI or DBI and ABI the declaration of Infer inferiority versus the acceptance of it when we are trying to learn about who we are we cannot deem ourselves even though we were told we were inferior by by race, by culture, by, by just the likeness of our skin. You can't accept it. And diving into African spirituality is the process of not accepting, not accepting the definition of your or of what your likeness is in regards to how it is displayed in an oppressive society. In my community, we uh, when we came in, as we moved towards leadership. Because I don't know if this was required um, in the individuals who weren't moving toward leadership, um, but it should have been. 
you know, I can ask and I'll find out that by next week. Uh, however, we all had to read a particular book. And uh, this book gave us an understanding uh, of African spirituality from a sympathetic perspective, from a perspective of an African. And so I felt that the best way now, do I, do I have a community that I'm a part of? Yes. Do I personally study a traditional African uh, um, uh, spirituality or, or sect or, you know, or faith or, you know, or religious practices? Absolutely. And so in my community, one of the things first in my, 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 my massive community, global community or Christian community, uh, which is Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church, where I choose to be. We had to take a time as we moved toward leadership, there was a certain required reading for individuals seeking not only to understand the faith, but able to, if we were sent to other places, be able to go create it, build it, sustain it, and grow it. And this is why in my, in my present time, with the seasoning of my, you know, of my days, I am seasoned. <laughs> I'm not an elder yet. They call me seasoned. I'm able to share the wisdom that I, I, I that is inside me and I I'm reading the book yet again uh, when we were going through it was paraphrased for, on our behalf and we had classes and and, and whatnot so we're studying restudying it and going back over um, none of this data is in the people's library that I always talk about because there is no it was very few documents out there explaining African spirituality and even now with the sect that I, I, I do study the traditional um, African faith that I do study there's no written documents and sometimes in classes when we're asking um, questions he has to say I need to let me contact you know uh, out of West Africa let me contact the, the, the tribe and ask that question because that question has never come up before or I'm not quite sure and he'll go back and he'll ask the question and, and that's something that you know we want to always look in now African communities I think I got a sneeze coming on that's what's happening to me African communities when we take a look and if you were part of the been a part of the African history class roots and culture world of the Kibla and African history class we um, took us took took the steps through the development of civilization where Africa is definitely the cradle of civilization the cradle of life the the, the cradle of understanding and wisdom intelligence it was the birthplace of high level civilization period and every discipline came out of the continent period even religion and so when we say religion, we say, you know, it's, oh, I'm not religious. Everything's religion and everything is spiritual. It's, it's how things, religion is, I think, according to my memory, it comes from a Latin word, religare, which means uh, relationship. You know, and so everything is a relationship, is in relationship to one another. And you can't really study African history without understanding African spirituality, the spirit of a people that created such great things that has not yet been duplicated. That's the thing. It has not yet been duplicated. Some things that we've done as a people, as a community, they can't figure out how. Why? Because there's no true connection that they have with each other. No connection with nature. No connection with the creator. Or a low connection. Woo! How did Michelle Obama say when they go high, when they go low, we go high? Right? low connections is the reason why a lot of things cannot be understood and so instead of saying that we can't explain it we destroyed it and we're going to tell you it wasn't worth anything well when reading this book and going through uh african spirituality uh well reading this book and going through african spirituality uh makes me see all the the areas of, of the book makes me realize how much is uh, of ancient african wisdom is embedded in modern religion which is modern religion is considered Christianity and Muslim as in Islam those are the infant babies of ancient African spirituality and religious practices and you will be able to see the things woven into each other and so of course we you know man took 
Judaism and made Catholicism and of course you know Islam comes from the other son of Abraham you know and those were the last ones developed that are, have been worldwide and so we to take we're gonna sit down and take a look at this now we get ready to go recapping if you've missed it because we missed a Sunday we're going to recap and I, I know I started a couple of minutes late so we're going to try to move as fast as possible because this particular chapter this particular chapter was woo, detailed right so as we recap we talked about monotheism polytheism and animism which is the uh, one God multi gods and then mul uh, one God multi gods and tons of spirits <laughs> Africa created them all so 4,200 African cultures, there are 4,200 uh, 4, um, African uh, uh, tribes, there are 4,200 versions of spirituality where people uh, 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 create the spiritual experiences that best helps them describe their existence here. And that is a beautiful thing. Why? Because you're not forcing anything. Everything is natural. Then we, we talk about the, the uh, areas of African four major areas of African spirituality it's the recap Muntu which is the intellectual beings on this earth uh, Kintu which is the the Kintu 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 uh, plants animals minerals trees Hantu is the time and let me quickly switch this when we talk about time we talk about the the uh, Sasa and the Zamani that's important. Two areas of time that's important, which is the Sasa and the Zumani. The Zumani is your past. An endless amount of endless amount of time. The Sasa is the current. Now in African spirituality, they don't talk about the future. You know how we sit down and we we they got to, they got you looking to the future for a sense of relief in your life. The, the hereafter or the by and by. Are you planning for your big future somewhere down the road? I can't wait till I, you know, what happens. I always tell kids in the world of a key plan, I said, wait a minute. There is no age that is that is written where someone becomes, becomes conscious of their spiritual awareness. As children, you're fresh out of the the, end, the the spiritual realm which God exists. So you actually have more power than the, the middle age adults. Now somewhere in the middle age, you're weakening. You get weakened in that middle, middle era if you don't stay connected. Mm. And then you become more conscious of it when you're older. Why? Because you're about to go back to it. <laughs> you're about to respect life more appreciate life more and so that that zamani and the sasa coincide you know they they come in contact the zamani is in the sasa because you know my past moves as much as my future we're always producing one thing that's time god continues to produce time i said that's currency until he decides time is infinite because when you cross over time still continues you're just on a different realm and a different plane now, when you start thinking of life like that yeah the the, 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 the it's okay to be sad but the sorrow of depression of somebody transitioning changes because you understand that the journey continues. Oh, whoa! I gotta say hello to Alamaze. One love. I uh, love you too. I uh, thank you. Hey, girl. I'm 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 doing what I do. Gotta put it down for the children, and I appreciate you too. This is what we do. Uh, uh yeah. Okay. Um, and so this, this again, so the, the Zamani and the Sasa is deeply important. We have to know that there is nothing more sacred than the second, the nanosecond we live in. We always plan for tomorrow. Wait a minute. God said, let give me your greatest at this moment, because at that moment, God can intervene and make things happen. But if you're always putting things off, you don't give God an opportunity to intervene and where you need it you don't give your ancestors an opportunity to intervene why because you're so focused down the road if you got a plan down the road that's fine but what are you doing at this second to manifest everything this second zamani and yasasa and so and then the last part of african spirituality that means a lot is the kuntu and that kuntu is the modality how we express our, our 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 relationship or our reverence for God, and so in African spirituality, now that's chapter seven. That's next week. <laughs> this week we're not talking about the expression of God, but 
when you want to know why black folk are so empowered when it comes to or they sense surrender so much when it comes to giving God praise it is because of the kintu the kuntu is is like like and then you see the into part of each word that is the that is the energy and spirit that that connects all aspects of African spirituality together ain't that something so you know we call it the Holy Spirit you know they just call it the energy force that connects all things together which is a, a, a representation of God we want to always you know you know take a look at that so last week's our conversations were based on mm, let me get this up the nature of God and so we did we, we took a look at African spirituality and the, and the nature of God and, and how it, it, it uh, how we look at it right and what we said was let me turn that off restart what we what we what we said was it was no different than what what people see in, in modern times and a lot of times we want to we want to talk about African spirituality like it's it's something crazy, it's something distant, it's something is that we're not we you know, it's not real. It's voodoo. It's ah uh, whatever it is. No. This is clearly God is omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent. It's the nature of God in all things. And so that is how Africans see it in a nutshell again and then we talked about the work of God now at this particular point I believe we this was chapter 5 all the other things that I, I, I recapped on was 1 through 4 so the work of God was chapter 5 and we talked about how the work of God was God was his creation then we discussed the, the providence of God the sustainability of God, how God sustains his creation. From there we went to also sending afflictions, which is the illnesses and you know certain things, but they said they sometimes they use that as a means of trying to explain what they can't explain. And that, that was a hard that was a hard section, actually. And then the issue of the government of God. Nothing is 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 away from God's judgment. Nothing. Everything is under the judgment of God. God even has a plan. You know, he's trying to govern you to accept the plan he has for you. Your plan may be this big, but God's plan for you is the size of the universe. Mm. So which one will you surrender to? Ain't that something? And then it was the God in human history. We know that God works through man. God works through, in African spirituality, God works everything we only attribute God's work in, in, on this earth through man from our current perspective African spirituality this is ancient African wisdom and we'll talk about this how God works through everything and that's ancient African wisdom All right. she said I love witches <laughs> shamans amen why? Because then this is clear in African spirituality that into we woo. This is why we need you know and and Alamaz. I'm gonna be trying to get people to come in and have discussions on this stuff. Uh, so I appreciate you dropping that. There is when we talk about the into, the energy, the spirit that goes in between all aspects of of spirituality. There are certain individuals that have the ability to access that energy, and certain and they you know you want to call them witches that's that's you africa we call them shamans and i don't know how to uh, uh i don't know how to pronounce the one that you said with the b uh yeah i don't know how to pronounce that word <laughs> but there, there are individuals that have access to these powers these abilities and some at one point in in a level of meditation when you surrender right we all have access but everybody there's their the buha bru, brujas Brohas, brujas or brohas or something like that. <laughs> I hear you, sister. Brujas, brujas. Okay, thank you. I hope I said it right. But in in the in the kintu, there are individuals who have who access that power. We all have that ability when we are surrendering to that that uh that energy. 
right and so that's that's important but we want to there's one thing I want to show you so but today we are talking did I put that up there I didn't even put it up there we're talking about God and nature God and nature so I'm gonna put this up here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna have this running and seeing in the background I don't know if it's gonna you know if you're going if commercials are gonna pop up because this is not a video that I edited this is something that's uh, that I got from uh, YouTube University as well but when you look at the location of Africa a lot of people who have visited Africa said if God lives anywhere God lives on the continent God lives on the continent because every time you turn around and every time you take a look at what's on the continent it's absolutely breathtaking it's absolutely beautiful and so to to be a people to come from that environment how could you not see God in all things and that's when we talk about God in nature right and so when you, you you're dealing with God in nature you 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 have where it's a men lives in a religious universe where all things are associated with God and the expressions of God originate from God and it bears witness to the creator everything when you look at how the harmony of life on the continent and you can go anywhere and, and sit in nature and just see nature exists as itself it's in perfect form every rock every piece of grass trees there is nothing that they don't say that the, the, the presence and power of God existed. Now, if you were at, at a Kibalan Inspirational Sunday, we talked about the vibration of an atom and how that atom vibrating, moving left and right, it's getting energy from somewhere that they have no source. But it's in everything. So if there's an atom, we are like a billions of atoms in our bodies and that energy is moving, it has a source. They can't tell where it comes from. And that, that movement of that energy is in every single thing. And it took African spirituality and wisdom to be able to sit down and say, this is all God. There is nothing separate from God. And anything I touch is God. You know, knife by my door. Yeah. It's all God because it all has an atom in it. What else I got around me? A book trees right shirt sweater it's all God and so what was the people's spiritual awareness in this in this in this in this state who were they what were they thinking and that's all oh, I changed the location you weren't supposed to see that right that's what you're supposed to see I wasn't used to that <laughs> so you have to uh, this is the second screen it's animals animals God is in all things now when we switch let's go pause that for a minute in the in the Kimba tribe it says the heavens and earth are the, are like like and so well wait we don't even want to go there we want to we want to before we jump there we go here there are two words that I want um, vocabulary for the, those who don't know vocabulary, for those who know, just a reminder: anthropomorphic and anthro uh, anthro uh, uh, centric. Anthropomorphic is the fact that you take in entities and objects and make giving them human form. And a a anthrocentric is when man puts himself as the center of the earth. And sometimes when we are, so to speak. Um, giving God uh, we give God his his attributes they have human attributes and and that is something that is a part of where we are as a people and so when we talk about um, ancient African wisdom and we we look at how they see the, the or saw themselves or see them we say we can say still see themselves how they see themselves in God when they describe it sometimes men can only describe things according to how he sees himself that doesn't make it wrong but it gives him a clearer understanding that it works well within his mind 
right? And so when we when we do that, and and that's why in um when they're talking about the heavens and earth, so we're gonna start with God and nature with heavens and earth, and God and nature and the heavens and earth, the uh the Akimba tribe, they said heaven and earth are two large bowls in God's hands, right? They had two large bowls. And God created both. And what's in this bowl of heaven is under God's jurisdiction. What's in this bowl of earth is under God's jurisdiction. It's all of God and it, it, it is it belongs. It's ownership. And this is why when they look at land and they, they looked at people, when you're dealing with African spirituality and the spirituality that was, was governed by an African people, when even when we went to wars before European invasion, we wasn't out to hurt people. We was out to bring people together. Especially when you look at uh, Kush and Kemet. It was like, look, we just trying to maintain holy order, harmony with God. You have too much influence with individuals who are not in the continent. And they are coming and slowly taking over your society. So we will go to war on your behalf to kick the influence out. We will then be the kings in Egypt. This is what Cush was doing to Egypt. Because Cush was the bigger and most stronger civilization. I hope you was watching African, uh, African history. And so they would leave the kings of Cush. Some of the kings and queens becoming pharaohs in Egypt. Hmm. Why? To maintain the balance that belonged to God. And the Sukh and the Baganda tribes uh, hold that is uh, um, God is uh, the father of man. He's the father of deities and he's the father of religious beings. And so when you, when you take a look at um, the different areas, you're like monotheistic, polytheistic, and animism, where monotheistic is just one God, Okay, but then polytheism, it's deities and spiritual beings, angels, if so to speak. So how could how could you get upset with with when and be, you know, Christian and know that Africa has uh polytheism, multiple deities and gods under one God though. But you have spirits and you don't see them as other beings? That's polytheism. When they're multiple spiritual beings beings one god multiple spiritual beings one major god and may have lower gods and lower spirits and deities but there's still always even even in polytheism there's one higher god and uh and so in 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 some societies now with this there was a there was so much data here that i couldn't type everything up but in some societies they were who were uh, uh matriarchal some societies said god was a woman so again, when we're dealing with polytheism and monotheism, you are the center. So if you are um, from a monotheistic, which what which Cush uh, uh, was, I'm trying to get this this next this next slide set up. You are you were clearly 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 understanding that God is going to be a female. Why? Because in, in, in my world, woman is center. And I remember an experience where I went to pray in a, um, I don't know, you, they said, brother, could you pray for us? And I was, I was in a comedy show. I said, the kind, I, I said, mother, father, God. Not to offend anybody there. Father, God, mother, father, God. Because there was some women who sit down and say, I, my God is a woman. That's perfectly fine. Some men say, my God is a man. That's perfectly fine. So I didn't know who was around me. And you know what the ears heard? Wait, say it to yourself, say it real fast, and you tell me what you think they heard. Nothing but heathens. <laughs> Nothing but heathens. You know, now God as a, uh, um, there are in the newer tribe, newer tribe said that they, it's a, uh, they look at it as, as they, they have the statement of the children of God. They refer to themselves as the children of God, uh, the sons of God, or the people of God. Like God bears, physically bears children. That's, and that's anthropomorphism or anthrocentrism, right? 
And so they see it the same way. And so making them feel ostracized doesn't make sense because the wisdom in which we use our spirituality even in modern times come from ancient African wisdom. Right? Um, many gods are, they say that God has, uh, they don't give God a body. You got hands. You know what I mean? You might talk about God has ears. In some tribes, God smells the burning of incense. Mm. May this be pleasing. The aroma, the fragrance be pleasing to you. They talk like spirits have, 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 have noses. You light incense in a ritual and tell your ancestors, may the journey that we are on be as sweet as the aroma of these incense. We are always giving uh, attributes to these gods, to God and our ancestors, um, as though they had physical or human characteristics because it helps our understanding even more. Now, that doesn't mean that this is literal for them. Like anything else in terms of modern Christianity and modern Islam, it's, it's a, a metaphysical, God is metaphysical. So it's more of a, a, a metaphorical phrase. It's a, a, a um, or a poetic gesture, so to speak. And and that's what you you understand in African spirituality. It's not uh, like set in stone, you know. And that's something that you don't want to you want to do. And the next one we'll be looking at in terms of because today we are looking at God and nature. According to African spirituality, it says, uh, now animals and plants are held in high regard. Why? Because it was, uh, it's what is used for our sustenance. So it's in high regard. In the Zulu tribe, it says the Zulu tribe believe that God sent men. Or mankind, not man, but man down to earth with animals simultaneously and got instructions. God instructed saying, let them be your food, eat their flesh and drink their milk. Clear. And so it was like simultaneously, this is who we are. Even it, it, it it's in some so uh, uh, animals and food are so in hard regard. It, it, it uh. They are linked to even um, concepts of God. There we go. It's coming out. Uh, the, in the Messiah, God gave them cattle in the beginning. No one else had the rights to cattle. Now, this was funny when I was reading this. And again, we're taking a look. This is African spirituality in general coming from the book African Religions and Philosophy. It was my, my goal and my focus that if I'm going to educate the young younger individuals and individuals in African spirituality before I, I start talking about my particular African source or, or religion or faith or that I follow that I'm studying, let's learn in general. And then when I, we get down to studying uh, Yoruba, studying Ifa uh, uh, or D Dagbani, studying these particular tribes, you have a foundation of understanding. And that's what we're going to do first. And so taking a look at uh, how Africans and African spirituality see animals and plants. They keep them in high regard because it's where we get the vegetation. It's how God sustains us. It's how he expresses his providence for us. So in the mass side, they said, wait a minute. This is how they believe. God made cattle for us. No one else. The cattle was given to the Maasai people. We are the natural born herders of the planet. No one else had cattle before us. And cattle belong to us. Religious rights. So when they go. If they can go into a neighboring community. And just walk up and they just. Come on. Come on. Start taking the cattle. The cattle follow. It's a spiritual connection. And they, they don't see it as thievery. And I'm, I'm maybe, and I wonder what I would love to speak to with somebody in the Maasai tribe. How does the other tribe see it? Hmm. We know what your religious faith are. Does it match up? And the, and the Dinka tribe 
Cattle and children belong to God and they are a gift of God. You know that you can't eat without cattle. You can't eat without plants. And then let's talk, wow, let's bring African spirituality in today's world of COVID. Mm. We gonna, yeah. And I didn't, this is, this is a revelation and this is something to share. I have a friend who is versed in herbs. She is versed in herbs. I have actually two friends who I know are truly deeply versed. One is is hereditary. Her her grandmother was an herbalist and could tell you everything. This sister has herbs that if you have a keloid, she can put certain things together and over a period of uh, three to six months, the keloid disappears. She took pictures of the ointment in use where you would see it month to month and the keloid disappears. The Africans saw animals and herbs as something deeply sacred. You have even there are certain animals that they won't even kill, and we'll, we'll we, you know well we can we'll talk about that. And we'll, plants that 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 uh, you know that it means something. And so for for during COVID, what I've done, I called around to several people, and I'm like, look, I need remedies, man. Because my daughter has a zero immune system. She has lupus and going in and out of the house, you know, when I have to, not because I want to, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't play with the sickness. I do what I have to do, you know, but I'm not going to sit down and be in a bunch of crowd and bring home when I know I have a daughter that has a zero immune system. And if I sneeze in my house, so I said, I need something that fortifies me, that, that brings me up. And if I am, if my system drops, I need an instant boost, man, these collection of herbs is real. I take a sip. I, I I'm I'm like this for a high second, and then all of a sudden, it's just like I drank a a a cup full of uh, nitrous oxide. I'm gone. N- nothing but energy, nothing but strength, power. When I'm trying to tell you, God created something beautiful and wonderful, and it takes a people to see God in all things to figure out what herbs do what now animals are the same way now not the same way where as as uh you know you can eat certain animals or certain foods you know you can't eat certain foods but certain vegetables but animals are also considered as 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 uh sacred rituals uh where you have fierce animals we talk about we see the lion on the picture the lion was is 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 considered a representation of the imminent of God, that power and that strength of God. I never understood why you use a lion. <laughs> Cause it's the king of the jungle. No, it has nothing to do with the jungle. It has everything to do with how Africans see God in that animal. Woo! You can't take the jungle just cause he rules the jungle means nothing. It is how they see him in relationship to God. The power of this animal is this or that and that's different so you have like um snakes are sacred pythons certain tribes won't allow you to kill a snake and then you have the chameleon that changes that's the signification of of the resurrection and immortality birds and chickens are are, are most uh, societies are used for religious purposes and sacrifices right spiders are considered wisdom and some tribes in Africa they said that they call God they, that the title for God is, is is the African name that means the great spider because of the wisdom now in African spirituality in, in my when they said when you start connecting with nature you start calling on your ancestors your ancient ancestors and you, you you're learning how to do ancestral veneration watch they said why, once you start that process and you get deep and deep into that process Watch how nature folds around you. This is ancient African wisdom. So there will be certain animals that will be drawn, insects and animals that will be drawn to you. And that's how you can align your spirit. That this, or, or find out where your spirit is at that moment. 
that moment in time, at that moment in your sasa, because you know you're always developing, you're always growing, so things may change. Situations and circumstances may alter your, your character, and so that you 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 can maneuver around it a, a lot better because there's so many levels of ancestral support that you can get. So so many people come to support you when you start doing ancestral veneration. The same ancestors don't come. It may not be mom and big mom and them. It might be somebody that you don't even know, but that's in your bloodline, but is at at the best at what you need done. Then you become and you be as they pour into you, you embody that spirit. And so certain religious rites and you know is there. And I know for me, when I started getting into it, I saw two creatures gravitate to me heavily. Bees was swarming around me. My story, this is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Spider about size like this big in my in, in my door. I'd see him like, yo, you can stay there. When I started seeing him, you can stay there long as you don't come near me. Near me. You're outside, you're in your domain, that's cool. I began to speak to nature. Why? Because I'm connected to it. Then he he disobeyed. <laughs> and he, he jumped on my porch like I couldn't walk down the stairs on my porch. And so I said, didn't I tell you not to do this? And I swept him out. To, you're getting three shots and he did it again I opened my door he right in front of my door <laughs> I said man dude what are you trying to catch me stop it you're not catching me I have dominion over you you got one last shot if you come back by my door I'm killing you third time he, f he found himself to the tree on the porch and was at the tree when the time hit he's gone I hope I, don't, I hope he don't he don't get too big you know if he get too big I'm, I, I got to get rid of him because I ain't pl I don't play that <laughs> but it was a spider the other one was bees I walk outside and they be all over I drove literally 15 miles from my house get out my car I turn around and look the bees are hovering my car so if you want to know, look it around you and see what gravitates towards you. So if you want to know what my anim my animal energy is at this particular point in terms of insects, yeah, wisdom, spider, and go look up bees. <laughs> go look up bees. Now, also, trees are sacred. Yes, trees are sacred. When they say you have tribes that talk about the tree of life, some tribes believe that... Uh, Some tribes believe that, that men came from a tree. Men are, are, are products of trees. And so you have the tree of life. Then you have the forbidden tree, which is the tree that you're not supposed to eat. The fruit from that tree you're not supposed to eat. Isn't that something? Where, where did that story come from? Hmm. Ancient African wisdom. There's nothing out here that's new. Everything comes from our, our our ancient African ancestors, our spirituality of black people. And that wild fig tree. You remember the story of the fig tree that bare no fruit? He cursed it. Fig trees are sacred. Bearing fruit, they do in and all over Africa, there are tribes that do offerings in front of fig trees, sacrifices in front of fig trees, prayers up and down and all the way around a fig tree. Trees are sacred. What is your animal spirit? Hmm. Ain't that something? What part of you? And then when you see what gravitates towards you, what part of you uh, is, is there? And then look up what that animal means. Look up a cat, dog, duck, whatever it is. Birds, flies, ladybugs. Ladybugs, frogs, lizards. Yes. Look up what they mean and see how that affects you. Right? Now, one of the things that you always got to understand is that, again, according to ancient African wisdom, the universe is a sacred place. There is nothing in the universe that is disconnected from God. It is all. God. I don't see the giraffe without seeing God. I don't see the leopard without seeing God. I don't see the weeds without seeing God or the buffalo. Everything has a spiritual meaning and everything has a spiritual connotation. Now, 
one of the areas in the book also talked about God and the phenomena of nature. Mm. The phenomena, natural objects and phenomena. So when you see, let me see if I can stop this. What would be the phenomena in this image? Would be the sky. Would be clouds. If the sun was out, it would be the sun. Right? It would be the air. That's considered phenomena. Or nature. You know. Let's see here. And so I, I did take a list of some of these things. And put them up here. And we'll, we'll discuss some of them. Um, again, this was a detailed, detailed, detailed chapter. In terms of. Because when you talk about we live in a spiritual and religious universe there is nothing you're going to find that is absent from God or does not have a definition that connects it to its originator and so when you when you realize that this is the universe they believe they lived in right what couldn't that people create so when I have a friend and, and I hope my friend and, I, and it's funny because uh, I will ask him personally did you watch? Because he said, brother, he literally charged. I told you, I'm, I was community charged to put this together in so many different ways for so many people. Because he is a, a Republican. And he goes to fight for Republican. And we talk about systematic oppression. He was like, black people oppress black people. I said, hold up, Wardy. Do you understand that before European influence on the African continent, there was no sense of brutality on that war was war, but it was for the sake of regaining harmony because individuals were trying to come into the continent that did not belong. We didn't, we didn't just, it was no sense of genocide before European invasion. After European invasion, yeah, the horrors of genocide just blew up. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? And so we look at the, the universe, everything in it. We live in a religious universe. So to say I don't believe in religion is to say that you don't believe in God. So I am spiritual and religious, meaning I have a relationship to all things. And everything I do is a testimony to my faith. Let's take a look at these things. Now you have uh, heavens and earth. That well, well, the, the sun, the moon, sun, the earth, the moon, the stars, right? And in the myths of of everything, and one we want to also always make sure, and that's why I did that first, that we are still in a spiritual, religious universe. It's all things. They can't talk about the moon and not talk about God. Now we have science. Science explains to us what this actually is because they studied it. In spirituality, fine, I know what the moon is. I know how the universe is set up. But with my spirituality, I see how God has done. I see it still as a manifestation of God. And in certain circles, like mine, if you've been listening to African Spiritual, not uh, uh, Keyblade Inspirational Sunday, we said science and math are God's language. As man became modernized and he became to understand the world around him, and if you look at the, the, the Temple of Luxor, we got the Pythagorean theory, we were studying the earth. A lot of this mathematical equations came from ancient African culture. What? Yes, so as we studied the earth, science and math was decided to be the language that God would use to help us understand the world around us. Some people say, some tribes say that the moon is, is God's right eye looking. I see you. The, the sun is God's, uh, no, the moon is the left eye that... Uh, left eye, the sun is the right eye. Yeah. 
Some people say God lives in the heavens. And that's when you have that anthropomorphic state of being. How do you describe it? God is in the heavens. Well, what is the heavens? Kingdom of God is no further than the tip of your nose. You in it. You are it. It is you. There is a, a term what they call uh, in uh, one Africa, some African tribes have a term that call God the Great One in the sky. Mm. Everything leads back to its orientation. And then when you have the uh, uh, the moon, they say some people say that the moon is feminine. It's a feminine deity. Mm -hmm. It's a companion of the Creator, right? Some say the sun is actually the son of God. Ain't that something? I wonder how that works when we're saying the son of God. And where did we get it? Where did they get it from and out of Christianity? Because they, they've been saying it, the son of God for ages. Right? They said the rain is the greatest blessing. God's greatest blessing, especially coming from the continent. Why? Because it 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 gives uh, the the uh, riches, or uh, uh, it fertilizes the soil. Now, in certain certain instances, they said the you know they would pray that the floods didn't destroy houses and 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 stuff like that and, and cattle. But in Nubia, they were happy the floods came. Why? Because when the floods come, even though it might have destroyed your lands, when they left, the lands were completely fertile. Rains are, are are prayed for in so many different ways, and not only that, the, you, you have certain people that in the end too, those who can access spirit. It's a uh, rainmaker. That's not just Indian. That's African. Then it became Indian. Okay, let's get that right. And there are special prayers that will start raining rain season. It's we time we need to start praying. Oh. We now it's raining a lot. We don't want the, the, the thing to get get soaked. We gotta pray to stop this rain. And we'll they'll pray to stop the rain. You know, and in in it with the with the uh in Kush, if you were listening in African history class, in Kush they said that uh if it the rain season came and it flooded your area, your taxes went up. Why? Because they knew that your harvest would be plentiful. Wow. If you didn't get a flood, your taxes were dropped. Every your taxes wasn't according was according to what God sent, what God gave, because they know that what you could produce. What in God? Then you have uh, thunder. Thunder being, they said thunder was the voice of God. Boom. When God speaks, he causes thunder to hit. They said, uh, it is the anger of God, how it hits and destroys, and the weapon of God. Mm. They said, yeah, God, you, you, you upset. You got, got struck by lightning in your house. So remember, we, I don't know if, about y'all, but when it was thunder and lightning, my grandmother would cut off all the lights and all the electronics. Yeah, no noise. Why? God's here. <laughs> Oh, man, I remember sitting in Smithfield, North Carolina in the country with my grandmama house. What's up, y'all? Yeah. Sitting there and the, when it, with thunderstorm, everybody got quiet. It was time to go to bed because what you going to do with all the lights off? Nothing. And so we would let God do what God doing, you know, and just walk away and leave it at that. Uh, some say with the, the lightning and the thunder, and if you watch it happen, you sit it, it's a trail when it hits more than once they said that's God's way of clearing his path out as he roams through again everything in life has an orientation in God when it comes to African spirituality you got to understand when you're understanding that when you're trying to get knowledge of self and you're trying to get to the most powerful you you have to get to the understanding that your ancestors had that created the, the, the great empires in which influenced the entire world everything was a manifestation of God when I, I, I teach and they were, we were talking to about education 
And they asked me to preach at the end of the school year, at the beginning of the school year, one of them, and it's that adult service. I said the first education to a child is an, un, is an education under God. Before you teach him his alphabets or any type of language, understanding they 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 learning who they are in God. Period. That's why when David wrote the prayer, he had put his chores in it. Why? African spirituality, they see everything in God. Everything. The Psalms prayer, everything is about everything he did. He related it. And he's just a sheep herder. Herding sheep. And every part of that prayer is written as though it was influenced by God. Why? Because that's exactly what they believed. That's not that's not the beginning of Christianity. That's the source of ancient African wisdom and its influence on Judaism. Ain't that something? Now, fire is, is something totally different. Fire is is was not totally different. Fire has is, is the thing they call holy fire, right? Where in in uh, it has the thing to uh, where well, in holy fire before the before the the harvest would come, they would light. Some some tribes, and it's not all tribes, but it was so many tribes listed. You know, I said, you know what? Instead of me listening to tribes and the sayings, we're just going to op open discussion and talk about it. And it would say um, they would carry this holy fire like the Olympics does. Wow. From region to region to region to bless so that fire could be in that, that region and bless the land. We want your presence here. So it was like right a renewal over destruction. We, we whatever's here, destroy it and renew it with life. That was the presence of that flame. It meant something. Holy fire. I know you know my church. It, man, you can't find a candle unlit. <laughs> Our altars beautiful and the candles are lit at the beginning of the service. Holy flame. Yes, the fire of God. It's just like using God as a lion, right? The lion is holy. The flame is holy. This is ancient African wisdom. This is not any, any, any other place else. It also signifies death and resurrection, right? It can destroy or fire can give life, make you warm. Ain't that something? Yes. If some like weeds are blowing, burn them down. Till the land. Grow. So many things I know in African spirituality, and 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 the sect that I, I study, with uh, flames. Yes, you do a ritual and you have candles. When you light the candle, you light that first candle. You don't light the second candle with the lighter. No, when you're doing a ritual, you're supposed to light the second candle with the candle of the first with the fire from the first candle. The fire from the second candle is then used to light the sandal, the fire on the third candle. Why? Because you are doing a prayer that connects the universe, your ancestors, and God to your request. That flame shares. Relationship. It grows. Some burns fast, and you say, you know, we'll talk about burning and flames and candles. That's a whole different discussion and conversation, you know, but fire is important. We're talking about the African religions and philosophies. Uh, the book by John uh, Mbiti, something that we had to read coming up, uh, moving toward leadership. Uh, and if you didn't read it, I figured that it's best for us to have an academic means of um, view of spirituality as we study African history so that we can under more understand the people that created the great history in which we come from. And then maybe, just maybe, and without any influence, I'm keeping it universal so you can make the choice. I'm not trying to tell you what to, what to believe in and what not to. Just trying to give you an understanding of who you are as a black man and woman. One love. And so the other thing we're studying in, in chapter 6, again, is God in nature. It listed earthquakes. Right? Now, the thing is, 
how do you see an earthquake? How do you see rain? How do you see animals? How do you see air? How do you how do you see any of it? Or are you so caught up in the science of it that you don't see God? Or do you do you see God when you see these things and understand it more because of the science? Wow. Because the science will get you away from God, then that that's bad science. Especially when when people say that science and this is now it don't care what color you are what 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 group of people you turned into from african people I don't care what form of uh what i'm gonna say offspring <laughs> you are to the black race right no matter what offspring you still see it science scientists see it as the language of god how come we don't what and we running from science but no, this is the language of God. Now, can people manipulate that science? Yep. Uh, and and, and <laughs> I was I was I was about to get uh, uh we're not gonna talk about COVID. We're gonna leave Fiji out of this. <laughs> we're gonna leave him out. But we're talking about earthquakes. Now, earthquakes in rivers and lakes and seas, right? All that is uh, uh, well, rivers, lakes, and seas. And you sit down and say those rivers, lakes, and seas. Water is deity. Water has deity in it. I didn't have that up there. I should have put that up there. Water are deities, they say. Water has spirits, they say. Water has the same significance as rain, right? And some tribes say it, it, it's a, they have it in hierarchy. If they are, have, if are, they are deities and hold spirits, seas first. Lakes, rivers. It's a hierarchy in African spirituality, even in water. Right? Everything is sacred. We live in a religious universe. Some say with earthquakes, it is God's footsteps. Wow. Boom. Boom. It's that pressure happening. Of course, we say it's tectonic plates moving in the earth. We know science. Spiritually, some people say before they could understand that, they still attested to the understanding of relationship to the creator. Because if anything is moving in the earth, because some say the earth is the tectonic place moving, that's a theory. Because some say the earth is actually expanding. Pangea, if it was once connected, all of a sudden it shifts. But they said the earth, like the universe, they said it's clear. We can say the universe is expanding. They don't want to tell you if they realize something different. They're not going to change the theology or, or the, 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 the philosophy of what they understand because they don't want to have to rewrite all the history books and say, you know what, we were wrong. Uh, uh, the tectonic place is not moving anything. Uh, the earth is expanding the same way we see the universe expanding theories which one do you want to believe in it's up to you which works what's true and what's not factual you do the research that's what you want hills mountains caves where's that one at? now now hills mountains and caves they say uh some tribes say that god's little ooh, ooh. let me let me switch so i find it and let me get back to a. No, hold on. There we go. Switch. God lives in caves. Or oh, man, they said God lived in the cave. Mountains, and the big mountains. And certain hills are so sacred in Africa, you can't go to them. Certain grounds, you can't walk on them. Mm -mm. That's God's. Why? And you so stay off. Why? Because that's God's. Don't go over there. Caves. They said sometimes it's certain certain offspring came out of caves. And sometimes they said men came out of caves. Everything is sacred. Everything has a story. Everything has 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 a a connection to its 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 creator and its maker. There is nothing. That is not religious or connected to God. Even when it comes to stones. Right? 
stones now rocks crystal stones i remember i was laughing my butt off when i saw some dude trying to sell sacred stones from africa if you need a you need a prayer stone send us fifty dollars and we'll send you a prayer stone i said man come on now we doing this <laughs> african spirituality they are prayer stones and they always have been prayer stones that was my ignorance now, whether or not I'm going to sell you a prayer stone is up to you. But if you get it from a sacred ground, and it's 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 considered sacred, and it's a people that live there that maintain its sacredness, and there's a spiritual power and entity there that when you when when a brother got this stone, and every time he held it and he spoke spoke from it, that things manifest on his behalf. Why? Because God is in the rock. God is in the rock. When they said the rock cries out. Rock don't have a mouth. It has energy and you can feel it. God is in the rock. I know I'm over I'm over the hour. But this is interesting. And then of course you have the crystals. They said, wait, in the rain, in rain dances. When you're dancing for the rain, you have to have certain sacred stones in order to get the rain to come. God is in the rock. And now if you have a crystal altar, that's a whole different level of, of understanding right there. Where God plays attributes and in, in, in energies in certain rocks, certain crystals, right? I have an African altar, of, of ancestral altar, and I have a, a, a crystal altar for meditation and, and clarity and cleansing. Wow. That's not something that's not African. That's ancient African wisdom. Look at this, and we're talking about these are coming from civilizations before European civilizations. African civilizations that dominated the world. Whoa, and we're going to get back into Kemet and everything else. And last but not least, colors and numbers. You ever see, you know, the kente, you realize that, and then, wait, even in even in slavery, when they would do the, the big blankets, and the blankets told a story, colors tell stories. Numbers have powers. This is not modern spirituality. This is ancient African wisdom. Of course, key colors, black and white. Animals, if you're a black or white animal, that animal was considered specially endowed with spiritual energy. What? Yes. That's where you get the concept of white doves and everything else. Colors. You know, look up your favorite color and see what it means for you. Look up. Now, we said, and I, I was going to open this up when I did this. Uh, give me a hot second to pull this graphic out. And, and when I get it, we talk about this year, this season, the season of anthro, uh, uh, amplification. We start saying that the number 22 has a, a, a deep meaning. And so when you're dealing with God and nature and nature and numbers, everything has a meaning and everything has a connotation when it comes and it points back to God. Right? Everything in African spirituality. And we said the year of 22. Now we have, it is the first month on the, the 22nd of 2022. And we said 22 is one of the most powerful uh, divine numbers that you can have because it is, is it, 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 it uh, signifies God giving you an uh, amplified amount of energy more than double amount of energy the double amount of your supply of energy to, to manifest your grand destiny it's ancient African wisdom this is not something coming from anybody else but uh, black folk <laughs> yes and so instead of feeling ostracizing the African faith African spirituality, African way of life. Embrace it and see how much you already, you're already in tune with it.
Most of the time, people don't know that they're in tune with Af their African sense of self. This is how we existed through this oppressive society. Without even knowing it, we are connected to the African power of the universe. How we perceive it. Why? Because we are a special people. We see the universe as being completely, completely connected to everything that is God. There is nothing separate in this universe from God. And that is after the base of African spirituality. There is nothing, and if you can live, again, uh, first education to a child is education under God. If you can get them to respect things according to what is right, life is spiritual, life is religious, it is righteous. And it's not about selflessness, it's about, I mean, selfishness, it's about selflessness. Hmm. Right? We did it, I hope, if you was listening to African speech, we talked about self-care. Self-care leads you to self-determination. What? That's real self-care. Not what you call it. Not in this modern time. Self-care leads you to self-determination. That's beautiful. Why? Because everything is God. Nothing is separate. African spirituality 101 from the African who chooses to speak next week we're going to be talking about modality yes the worship of God chapter 7 Woo. can't wait for that one I might, I might add uh, extra visuals for that like videos of us worshiping ain't nothing like it we are tapped into our own nature of African spirituality and we don't even know it. But we're going to figure this out and we're going to live from it. Then you will experience the rise of the African. And with that, I say, Ashe. Mm -hmm.